that level. Oh wow, Wowzer, Mick Wowzerson. I am sorry. Just need a moment. Was talking to the wife. Um, and it's dinner time. Welcome back. It is Monday. You know what we do on Mondays besides have dinner on stream. Actually, I haven't had dinner on stream in a while. You guys have not been um, blessed with the opportunity to sit at my dinner table with me <laughs> in a long time. So I can't wait. Anyway, so that we don't further prolong it, Welcome everyone to Pablo Man 44 stream. Today is Monday. This is the Play Level Podcast each and every week on Mondays, sometimes Tuesdays. It happened on Wednesdays, you know, you know, a couple of times. I don't think it ever happened on Thursday, and I hope it never happens on Thursday. We come here, we nerd out about the latest in gaming, um, shows, you know, like Netflix, Disney Plus, and all those streaming services, um, movies, like Spider-Man. I can't wait to talk about that. Um, tech and sports and all that good stuff. All the entertaining things that I enjoy, that I find to enter entertain myself with, that I enjoy spending time playing, watching, and etc. And we come here, we know about, about all the latest and news, rumors, and releases, and speculation, and all the scuttlebutt that goes around. Everything everyone's talking about. Well, you know. Not everyone, most people. But we do that every Monday, typically. And today's that day. So welcome to the Play Level Podcast. Today is Monday, January 17th, 2022. It is episode 25. We are a quarter of the way to 100 episodes. So I'm happy. Let's give a round of applause for that. Really? Slow clap, only three of you, that's it. Anyway, <laughs> we're gonna start with our first, our first segment of the day, level one. What do we do? We check in, we see how we feeling, what you been up to, you know, how's your day going? My day, like I said, just a normal relaxing day. It's a chillaxing day. Today was a chillaxing day. I was working on my stream stuff and played a little video games, but I was trying to keep it mellow because my back has been hurting for the past like almost a week. And I really needed to recover because the pain is, is a lot like and trying to work with it. I work tomorrow, so I feel like I'm in much better um, you know, place right now. So tomorrow should be should be good to go. But, you know, back pain is, like, terrible. I got to chat with Ali today. Shout out to Ali the Sniper. Make sure you follow him here on Twitch. He Twitch streams, and he has a YouTube channel. Um, we were kicking it. We were just talking, talking about stuff, talking about life, you know, talking about, you know, some deep stuff that, you know, most people, if you have a conversation with them about these things, they look at you funny. They think that you're weird, you know. They think you're crazy and all that stuff, you know, but he's a good person. He's a good friend. So we have, you know, a good conversation. We don't, we don't got to worry about judgmentals. I'm trying to figure out, that's my next problem. I'm trying to figure out why I'm getting like the lights on the side. Like they, they just swell up every now and then. It gets like bright and I get these bright spots next to me. That's the next thing that's been happening lately and it's annoying me. Blue Devin, how's your? But yeah, man, like, we're talking about stuff like theories and the difference between theories and reality and why. Why they out here peddling theories like it's reality and treating you, you know, like you crazy if you. If you don't think that a uh, theory is reality or, you know, I don't, I don't 
understand what you know what's going on in this world and stuff. There's a lot of things that they make that that's made up, but they want you to believe it as fact because they have no they have nothing else to to base you know the facts on. They they don't understand something, and I think you know it's okay to call it a theory and to let people have other theories on it, and it's fine. You know, if you can't figure something out, you can't figure something out. I mean, if you don't know, you don't know. You know? Man, Bulls lost again today. I mean, we got a lot of people out. We got, um, what's his name came back? Caruso finally came back from what it said. I didn't get to watch the game. But it said Alex Caruso came back. He didn't. No, he didn't. Oh, he's out. Oh, that's what it is. He's out of the um, protocols. So we didn't have Zach Levine, um, Lonzo Ball, or uh, Alex Caruso. We had to. We had to roll with that. We had to roll what he had today. You know. But you know, hey, it happens. You know, I get it. I ain't stressing. There are some rumors here. Let's not get into it yet. We'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that basketball stuff later. The Cowboys blew it again. It's not the playoffs, though, right? Oh, is, is were y'all trying to get in the playoffs? Were you trying to win to get in the playoffs? It is the playoffs? Oh, I didn't even know that, y'all, because the Giants sucked, so I don't know. <laughs> I haven't been watching... I mean, like, I just, you know, all I know is that, um, what the heck, man? What's the NFL? Oh, snap, the Rams. They beating the Cardinals. Although Beckham Jr., he fits more on the Rams than he did on the Browns. Wow. Stephen A enjoyed enjoyed your your team's loss there. I'm sorry. Sorry, I, I you know I I I don't really care out there. Not right now. The Giants not in not in the, the the playoffs, they're not even in the hunt. They they've been I don't know what's gonna go on with that man. You know. Oh wow. And then I heard y'all didn't get off a play in the final seconds. It's like, come on, man. But hey, it happens, man. No, no stress. It's no matata. Wow, so the Bengals are in the playoffs? That's weird to see. And they beat the Raiders. <laughs> the Bills beat the Patriots. Bye bye, Patriots. They got they got washed up. Diced them up. The Eagles are out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got lost to the Buccaneers. Hey, at least the Eagles are out. There's no there's no Eagles or, or Washington football team. So the Chiefs trounced the Steelers. Shout out to, <laughs> to Mr. Anderson. <laughs> oh man, the Steelers got smoked. I can't really talk. I mean the Giants weren't in the playoffs, but it's always funny. The Chiefs 42 to 21. All right, but we're talking about sports. We ain't, we ain't getting it. We ain't there yet. We're just checking in to see how we feeling. How you feeling today? Besides, you know, taking the L. You know, I took an L today, too. The Bulls lost to the Grizzlies. But, you know. Oh, it's in the cottage cheese container to save space. Yeah, I've been, I've been, I've been alright. I mean, you ate your veggie medley. <laughs> yeah, I just finished eating my dinner, my din din. You know, I've, I've made some good stuff, man. I made a uh, um, vegetable soup. Make you want to slap your mama. <laughs> I had, I had made that like last week, and I just finished it two days ago. So I made. Some vegetables, sauteed vegetables yesterday. 
I'm trying to get creative with, you know, the dishes. And I'm trying to make stuff that lasts like a few days. You know, I tried to make my um my my brown rice and veggie dish, you know, last you know, for three days. It lasted two, but cause Milan keep eating it. You know, I would have had if she didn't have any yesterday and not having what's left today, I would have had a third day. See, I would have squeezed three days out of that one meal. You know, I feel like I'm gonna make it again. Um, cause I use the um trying to portion control it as well. So I use the brown rice bags. I use two of them. Two of them would have lasted me three days. You know, the boil in the bag brown rice and. I just chopped up mad vegetables. I don't even know. Do I have more broccoli? Oh, no, I don't know. I might have used all my broccoli. I might have to go to Walmart after work tomorrow to get some broccoli. But, you know, I was using, um, you know, vegetables. Some of the stuff that I had from the, from the soup. I used onions, carrots, broccoli. Oh, I, I forgot I have corn. I didn't. I don't think I used corn in this one. I'm trying to think. I might have. I know I did in the soup. The soup was good. I used um tomatoes, um onions, green beans, corn, broccoli, um leeks. I used parsnip, and I think I had. I had something else. I forgot what else I like Carrots. Did I say carrots? If I didn't say carrots. I think I put celery in it. Yep, and I used um whole wheat noodles. Cause online it says you can use whole wheat noodles, so I use that. And um it says you can use salt, so I use sea salt. And I use, you know, a little bit, not you know, just enough so that it gave it you know it helped with the flavor but you know not too much so that was pretty good it came out pretty good yeah it came out tasting like like the canned soup you know before you add anything into it. i put pepper in it of course i put pepper in it oh and jalapenos that's that's the trick yo that's the trick to flavoring food without salt is yeah, you put a little sea salt just a pinch and you use hot peppers like jalapenos and stuff like that to cook with it gives it so much flavor i'm trying to tell you it's a it's a it's a cheat code it's a cheat code to not using too much salt and sometimes you don't have to use salt at all yes hot peppers the cheat code y'all jalapenos are really good they're hot but they're not overbearing hot um, I used a habanero in one my first dish that I made for the fast. I think it's a habanero. I wouldn't suggest if you're not, you know, into pep hot stuff like that, hot peppers like that, that you use a habanero. I believe it was hotter than the jalapeno. Whatever that little pepper Milan gets, that you know, the little small little, it's like a, it's like this big. It's flat, you know. Some of them are green, some of them are red, some of them are like green and yellow, some of them are like red and yellow. But they all come in the same pack. They're all hot. And they should they usually cook with them and don't like cut them open just for the flavor. But I busted that thing open. I smashed it. It's not called a Haitian pepper. Alright? You can't just say it's Haitian because you Haitians use it. Alright, my love? Just because you mad Haitian using that pepper doesn't mean you're the only one that uses that pepper. I bet Africans and Jamaicans and Trinidadians and all the West Indians and stuff, they use that pepper. All you island folk use that same pepper. I bet Mexicans use it. Well, not only Haitians use it. Stop lying. I've seen it used in Spanish food. They use it in Spanish food too, like Dominicans. So I don't know the name of the pepper. I believe it might be a habanero. I got to look it up. They copied us. <laughs> you, they copied y'all. That's, that's such a Haitian thing to say. <laughs> I only say that my wife is Haitian, so I don't have Haitian children, so, you know. 
I don't have anything against Haitians, you know. Or maybe I do. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Let me not joke like that. Uh, <laughs> shout out to all the Haitian people. Stop lying about that uh, being a Haitian pepper, Milan. That's not a Haitian pepper. It's a pepper. It has a name, and you need to find out the name of it so that I can tell the people the truth. We need the truth. It looks like a habanero, so I think it's a habanero. Which would mean it's more of a Mexican pepper than a Haitian pepper. But all in all, you like black? Yeah, I don't have any. I might buy some so I can make some. That was the first dish. It was black. Black and that hot, hot pepper with some red beans. I did some onions and broccoli and carrots. And black is easy to make. It's mad easy to make. You got to rinse it off first so that it's not all sticky and mushy because that, you know, you always got to rinse off your rice and your, um, you got to rinse off your rice and your bleh before, before you, you know, boil it. So you rinse it off very well and then you put it in the, in the pot and then you, as much bleh or rice as you use, use that same amount of water going above it like the water has to be that far above it and just a little bit more and then turn the stove on to like a medium heat a little medium high heat and oh it snowed last night and turned the rain with apocalypse winds you probably got the the rain and the wind from us because the other day it was like mad windy and rainy i wanted to wash my car but i couldn't I was done mad. But yeah. I'm giving y'all a lesson. Did we talk about how we feel it? Did the house move? That house always moves. That house used to always move, yo. <laughs> that house could not survive here in Florida, I swear. Because <laughs> it wouldn't be like. And there's like so much space in between everything that you get that wind revved up pushing stuff. I'm sure it was crazy. I remember them days, man. Man, more power to you, man. Pray on it. <laughs> the shaky, swaying house. It's because it's so tall and it's old. You know. But, you know, hopefully it's built, it's built strong enough. Neil probably did cry. But we're going to move into next... He said goggle. She said goggle it. Wait, hold up. I didn't even see that. Yep, she said goggle it. And then you will goggle again. <laughs> it's Google. G O O G L E. <laughs> it's not goggle. Goggle it. I'm goggling it. I don't see nothing. I don't see nothing. Is Haitian what goggle? <laughs> yeah, man. Goggle it, man. Hey. Hey, man. <laughs> but yeah, I um I okay, where we at? That you that messed me up. We're gonna talk about what we've been playing the past week. Auto spell me. Auto it auto spell me two times. It's auto correct. Gotta watch that auto correct. Um Yeah, so what have we been playing for the past week? Genshin Impact. What else did I play? Genshin Impact. I can't think of nothing else that I played the past week. Said witchcraft. Yikes. Um, man, what else did I play? I don't think I played anything else. I cannot think of anything else that I played over the last week. 
I think they forced me to play Genshin all week. Because Halira, who is working right now, in every moment she's not at work, plays that game, and she's like two levels above everybody. And it seems like every time I think I'm getting close to tying her up, or I do tie her up, the next day I work, I come home, she's another two levels ahead. And I'm like, how? I'm like, how, Sway? I can't do that in one day. How, how long did she play? And she began help. She began help from her boyfriend. <laughs> Let me stop. Let me stop teasing her. Shout out to Halira. She's at work now. She's not going to watch the stream tonight. She's got to work. She gets the pass because she got to work. That's the only reason she gets it. You play Skyrim? Oh, are you going to play through them? You should play through them. I've been and tell you should play through it. There's a lot that could be said about the new RDX. Hey, 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 hey. Let me be playing ads and... Oh, let me get this thing out of here. Be playing ads on my stream. You should play through them all. And, um... You should stream it. Because you have the PlayStation camera. I keep telling you. You could be live streaming. But you be you be playing, you be playing games. You know what I'm saying? So that's the plan to live stream it. There you go. You know, if you need if you need any tips or pointers, you know. <laughs> iPhone. 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 What? What are you for? I'm for chicken wings. I want four chicken wings. <laughs> I do be playing games. You be playing, but you don't be streaming games. You be playing games, but you don't be streaming games. You need to be streaming games. I was like sitting there thinking like, how, how would he do it? He got the PlayStation camera. Oh, he has a PlayStation camera because he has PlayStation VR. Yeah, you can stream. I'm for real. <laughs> So yeah, make sure you do that and let me know if you need if you need help on a logo or something. You just you got a logo, or if if you want a little you know change up, you got an idea. Let me know. I'll see what I can mock up. You know, for your background, your panels and stuff. I gotta help Halira with all that, like her panels and stuff. Um, that's the, um, the first one was Home Alone. The second one was, um, what was the second one? I think I watched the second one. Yeah, I watched the second one. He put another video up today. I think that's episode three. If it's, if it's part of the Fears of Fathom. I don't know if he played another one of those. He played another game today. I haven't watched the video yet. I'm gonna watch that after. But I watched the two episodes of Fears of Fear. The, the Hitchhiker one. Yeah, I saw that one. I saw, I saw, I saw both of them, um, and I have, I have the game, um, the first one. Yeah, I don't know if it came out yet. He put a video out today, and the thumbnail looked like it was in that same graphics, like it had that same graphics. So I'm not sure. I, I didn't check it. I didn't like see what the game was, and he doesn't exactly say what game he's playing, you know, in his thumbnail all the time. Yeah, it was good. It was good. It was good. I haven't tried it myself. Because the first one is free, and the second one is like three bucks. So I want to try it. But yeah, he she ended up in the hotel, and she had to go to the coffee machine. But the coffee machine didn't exist. It was crazy. Yeah, that 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 was pretty crazy. And and it goes to show you. You don't have to have, you know, the best graphics in the world to make a, a scary game, to make a good game. So that's take note, all you developers out there. Take note. Yeah, it was pretty good. They, whoever's the, the developer, they did a good job. But yeah, we're going to move on. 
and we're gonna get to our stories of the day. What are we go? What do we got going on today? Oops, wrong button. There we go. First story of the day is God of War PC has climbed up Steam bestsellers list already. Like there's a surprise there or something. Yeah, graphics do help, but it all about the mood and the setting. If you get the mood and the setting right and the, and the audio, like the, the, the voice acting and you know your sound effects and all that stuff, if you get it right, you can still make a crazy scary game and still make a good game. But I, I'm, a, I'm a graphics you know, nerd myself. I want graphics. Like You gotta give me graphics and gameplay and story. I want it all. Cause, oh, oh, <laughs> I want it all. <laughs> Let's not go back to those days. Anyway, this is no surprise. To turn the music down a bit. Oh, I'm yelling. I might be yelling. Hold up. Oh, the equalizer's up here. That's better. Is my is my my mic volume down too much? I could turn myself up some. I could use a little volume on it because I changed the setting, so my my mic might be down a little bit. I could turn that up a little. Yeah, so this comes to no surprise that God of War, the PC version, um, has you know is up there, is killing it, you know, bestsellers and all that stuff. Because to be honest. What else, what else are they going to play on PC? I mean, I'm telling you, I have a PC and I have a decent PC. I have an RTX graphics card. It's not a 30 series, it's a 20 series, but still, that's still really good, you know? And I've been trying to find games, like full games, like in the realm of like a God of War you know full like triple a titles and you can't really find any on pc like what is a pc triple a title like what is a pc only triple a title you can't really find any so of course when you get a playstation the king of triple a titles king of triple a exclusive titles when you get one of the one of those on your on your system on your pc of course everybody's gonna run to it if it, man they haven't played something that good in their life if they don't touch consoles because pc games they have some good games a lot of indie games a lot of short games a lot of games in alpha you know early development you know games like that there's still works in progress and, you know i'm sorry the hairs on my i don't know if it's my lip but something keeps going on my nose. My mustache hair. <laughs> it's just tickling my nose. But yeah. I mean, I do enjoy some PC games. I do enjoy some PC games. I, I will say that. Like, I have some some games. And there's a game on my radar right now called... um, What is it? Ready or Not. That I really want to get. But it's not like a full on game, like a story game where you go through the game, like, and you progress in the story and you level up and all that stuff. It's different. It's on the lines of like a Rainbow Six extraction and stuff like that, you know, where, you know, you get a, you get a, a friend. There's, I think, I don't know if it's more than two players. I only saw two people, two people playing it. You go in and you fight against drug lords. I mean, you know, drug dealers and there's, there's drug addicts. You go in, you're going to make the arrests. You're the cops and you have to go in you have to bust them. So you have to find where they are. You have to um, eliminate the hostiles. You don't have to kill them, but most of the time that's what happens because they shoot at you. So you're shooting and killing them. But you can also arrest them. You can also put them in custody. And it looks like it's really fun. If you're playing with the right person, somebody who, you know, who, who will get into character and play the game with you, game looks like it'll be real fun but it's not like a god of war it's not a, even on its level not close you know it's not in its realm it's one of those you know 
it's a, it's a different thing. So I didn't, I didn't, ex- I mean, I didn't, um, I mean, I expected. I'm not surprised. I'm, I'm trying to say, I'm not surprised that God of War is up there killing it on the on the sales charts. They got it, but I don't know how the the meta score for God of War um for Horizon Zero Dawn on the PC when they got 84. They bugging like they got games that good. Like stop, stop, stop hating. And you, there's no way they could have hated on God of War. Like this game has such a huge following for years, you could not give that thing anything. I think 93 is too low. If there's any PC only game that has more than 93, this thing deserves more than that. I'm sorry, God of War is like one of the best games ever made. So. That's let's we can, we can move on to the next title because this is very like self-explanatory. Steam bestsellers list. Of course, of course, it's God of War. It's a PlayStation exclusive. Let's keep it real. This one touched me in my heart. I haven't read the whole thing yet, so it may also break my heart. But I, if you know me, when the PlayStation 3 came out. I bought two games. I bought whatever 2K came out that year. And I bought Resistance Fall of Man. I had my PlayStation 3 day one. That's when I stood in line to pre-order. When, you know, when that was the thing. And it was like pandemonium. But it was, you know, there was like seven people on the line. Like, you know, I think it was like 12 people on the line. Only seven of us got the pre-order. I was number three. I was dumb happy. <laughs> um, this Resistance Fall of Man, the original one, is one of my favorite games of all time. And I can imagine a reboot in next gen graphics and the capabilities of the PlayStation 5, what a Resistance Fall of Man title would look like. It would demolish Call of Duties and Battlefields, it would demolish it straight up. People will be like, oh, but it's with aliens, so it's kind of different. Nah, son. Military and alien shooter. Like, it was, yo, you never played Resistance Fall of Man. You need to go find you somewhere to get a PlayStation 3 and buy Resistance Fall of Man and play it. The first one. Got to start with the first one. I'm mad PlayStation Now didn't have the first one, you know, because I would love to to play it, you know. I would have I played it here on my PlayStation. And I got a little bit of that feeling, but but let's see what the story says. When Ben Studios' pitch for Days Gone 2 fell through, they then decided to create a pitch for an open world resistance game. Whoa! The idea was that if the team couldn't use the world they had built in Days Gone for a sequel, they wanted to leverage the open world and the lessons they had learned from creating it for a different purpose. Unfortunately, that pitch was also rejected. Come on, son! (laughs) What would the new Resistance game have looked like? The game would have taken aspects of the existing Resistance universe and placed them into the open world. This included the mothership that will be hovering over the world as a constant reminder to players as to their end game objective. Speaking to For the Win, Days Gone direct- the director Jeff Ross says players would have assumed the role of young rebels tasked with building factions and an army that would take on the Chimerian infrastructure that would destroy mankind. They'd have to find a way to reach the mothership to take it down, something they may have involved building a ship, some- something that they may have involved building a ship themselves. Side quests would have taken the form of conversion centers and gun towers. Combat would have would have variation from all the different enemy and weapon types. Ross explains, that's an open world loop. That's a Nero checkpoint that is an enemy camp. This is an infection zone. There are actually so many possibilities. The game could have been huge, but that's it. I didn't spend more than a week on it because nobody was having it. Why, yo? 
With both, both pitches for Days Gone 2 and the new Resistance game declined, and the Siphon Filter reboot seemingly a non-starter, the studio moved on to working on a new IP. Head of Play PlayStation Studios Herman Holst has called their game a great new concept, and we'll just have to wait to find out what it is. In other news, head of Phil, Xbox Phil Center said he would love to create a system where abusive players could be banned across all gaming networks, including Xbox Live and PlayStation Network. Okay. Elsewhere, the much hype Hazard Zone mode for Battlefield 2042 has such a low player count that apparently DICE has stopped tracking the mode. That's sad. That game would have been Crack City, like for real. But I, I do think that they should have something where they ban players across all gaming networks so that these turds don't jump from one to another and bring their turdity over there. Like, keep that foolishness in your house to yourself. Don't bring it on the internet to people trying to play video games and relax and unwind and get away from their stresses. How are you causing people stress in something that's supposed to relieve stress, get you away from all your stresses? I don't understand people out in this world, yo. I just don't. But the resistance game, like just, just thinking of that pitch, man. Like, why did they reject it? Is it because Ben didn't make it because it's an insomniac game? Is Insomniac gonna work on it? Or is Insomniac not gonna work on it? Insomniac games made Resistance Fall of Man. They the ones who made Resistance. So what are they saying? Nah, Ben, you can't make it. Cause they're gonna have, you know, Insomniac work on it after Wolverine and Spider-Man 2? I don't know. But yo, we need a Resistance Fall of Man, man. I'm about to start tweeting like crazy. I'm, a, I'm about to start going at PlayStation with tweets like crazy. We're going to start a petition. Resistance Fall of Man. Do you want to see a new Resistance Fall of Man? Sign a petition below. <laughs> Let's get signatures. You know what I'm saying? Are, are you not going to green light a new Resistance game, yo? That's... They, they got to know that we clamoring for it. I can't be the only one who wants a new Resistance game. I can't be, yo. I talk about it all the time. Resistance, yo. Like, oh, a remake? They need to remake Resistance. I say it every time, yo. Come on, Sony. Come on, PlayStation. Let's do this. Let's do it. Next story. Before I cry. This one is bringing fuel and pouring it onto a fire of a rumor. PlayStation Now cards officially removed from retailers by Sony. Why? Because PlayStation Now got all these updates and now they're gonna shut it down? No. Following reports that Sony Interactive Entertainment has begun removing PlayStation Now gift cards from UK store shelves, the company has confirmed to VentureBeat that it's in process of pulling the cards globally. It'll only be a matter of time before they start disappearing from stores around the world. Why are they doing this, you ask? According to a company spokesperson, Sony will now focus on its cash domination gift cards, denomination gift cards, which can be used to purchase a PlayStation Now subscription. Globally, we're moving from we are moving from PlayStation Now gift cards to focus on our current cash denomination PlayStation gift cards, which can be redeemed for PlayStation Now. I reads a brief and sus, sus, I don't know how to say that word. I haven't I haven't seen that word before. I think it's susan 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 <laughs> statement. However, this neither confirms nor denies the speculation that Sony is winding up PlayStation Now in favor of the rumored merger of PlayStation Now and PlayStation Plus. Which I believe is the real reason. It doesn't confirm it or deny it, but that's what I'm talking about. It's been rumored for a long time that those two things were merging together. And now it's a good excuse to take the cards out of retailers around the world to say, oh, we, we want to focus on our PlayStation, um, you know, cash denomination cards, where it just says for PlayStation. So you can use it for games. You can use it to subscribe to PlayStation now, whatever you want. You add it to your, your, um, your wallet on the PlayStation and, you know, use it as you please. 
That's a that's a that's a clever. They're clever. You did a good job covering that one up. That was an easy one to cover up too, because you know they didn't come up with some weird excuse. You didn't not give a reason. That was valid. So I get it. But Zarmina writes, Sony avoided directly addressing Venture Beats report by stating that cash denomination cards cannot can be used to purchase a PlayStation Now subscription. The statement understandably wouldn't have revealed the company's plans ahead of time, but Sony has previously said that it's working on a PlayStation version of Xbox Game Pass. So we have reason to believe that Bloomberg's report of Project Spartacus isn't without merit. Exactly what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. So don't be surprised if sometime soon there's the drop because they're supposed to be next month is what they're saying in February a PlayStation event you know you know they're normal events and I'm hoping that they drop the bomb a PlayStation VR 2's headset show us that give us a release date talk to us about what's going on with Blue Box Game Studios. We're gonna check in with Blue Box Game Studios later on. Let's let's remember to do that. Let's not forget to check in with Blue Box Game Studios. I I, I want to check in with them. I want to make sure, you know. I want to make sure we get we get into. Let's see, let's see. Open link and new tab. Let's bring this tab over here to this end. And let's let's do twitter.com. I'm going to type in blue box. And we'll get to that. We'll get to that later. We'll get back to that later. Because I want to see, because it wasn't that long ago where they said, you know, something about the tech demo or something was going to be up soon to look out for it and nothing since you know so give, give me a second i want to see if there's any i haven't heard any anything you know i haven't been on their their twitter in a while so we're going to check that out later but yeah i'm i wouldn't be surprised if you know next month or whenever the playstation thing is they're going to talk about playstation vr2 um you know show some more exclusives you know surprises give us some drop some stuff on us and show us you know let us know what the playstation now playstation plus thing is going to be like you're gonna finally announce it <laughs> but we'll see time will tell next story major third-party playstation exclusive rumored to be revealed this year major third party Sony is preparing for a massive year in terms of game releases and have ramped up their marketing budget as a result. At least that's according to the latest rumors. Apparently, one of the reasons this the, the year will be so big is because Sony is gearing up to reveal a major third-party PlayStation exclusive, although nobody seems certain on what it is just yet. Silent Hill, baby! Come on! Silent Hill! <laughs> oh, yeah, you're always gonna... We're always going to talk about Silent Hill. We want Silent Hill. We want Silent Hill. All right. Sony's plans for 2022. Sony's slate of games for 2022 includes PlayStation exclusives like God of War Ragnarok, Gran Turismo 7, and Horizon Forbidden West, as well as multi-platform games like Elden Ring. However, according to the Sacred Symbols PlayStation podcast, there are other games that will mean an increase in promotional budget. Apparently, marketing spending is increasing greatly this year, indicating that Sony is anticipating a large year beyond. I would assume the games we know imminently, imminently most about Horizon, Gran Turismo, etc. The one thing that's causing the biggest increase in budget is a major yet unrevealed third party exclusive. Despite talking to someone in the know at Sony, the podcast couldn't say what the game was likely to be. They speculated that news could fit in with recent rumors that the next Bioshock game would be a timed exclusive, or that there could be an unannounced title from From Software. 
The most likely option though is that it's the next PlayStation exclusive reveal from Square Enix, whose announcement was reportedly delayed by the postponement of the next big Final Fantasy 16 reveal. The game will not be a title from the Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest, or Kingdom Hearts franchises. We're going to have to wait until spring at the earliest for this title to be revealed as this is when the next Final Fantasy 16 is due to happen. Whatever the, the major third party PlayStation exclusive turns out to be, the fact the game is part of this year's marketing budget means at least we know it will be revealed this year too. I can't believe it either, yo. That's that's got me bugging out. That is that's got me bugging out. Like <laughs> we need that resistance game, yo. Let's, yo, if there's two games that I really want, like I I would love a Metal Gear game, like a new Metal Gear game. I'm I'm, I'm telling you, I I would love it. But if there's two games that I would love them to make, Silent Hill reboot, Resistance reboot. I tell you, I'd be the happiest man on earth, happier than I am now. I'd be happy like a bucket of lollipops and a bucket of buffalo wings and a bucket of tater tots and a and a <laughs> a, a keg of Mountain Dew. <laughs> we need those games, yo. We need that. Yes, resistance in the open world. <sighs> that would be crazy. Resistance in the open world made sort of like how the division is made and stuff like that to go to bed. That's what you. That was your sentence. You need the what? Why didn't you do that already? Why are your alarms not set for Monday through Friday? Already, like they should be set Monday yeah, through Friday. Why? Y'all need to go to bed. But yeah, resistance game. If they made it like how? Oh, my phone died. Oh, you gotta wait. Look out for your phone being unlocked because I'm only going to unlock it for like two minutes. Yeah, it could be like Fallout, could be like, um, like the, the Division and, um, fall, um, what is that? Um, Breakpoint and stuff like that. That would be crazy. You know, but keeping the, um, you know, the first person shooter thing going, keeping it FPS. I don't know, man. They need to rethink that. It's either, it's either they're not going to make it or they got somebody else that they, you know, like Insomniac, they like Insomniac wants to make it. So they told Ben, nah, you can't do it. I don't see why not, y'all. Ben is a good studio and they got them working on on something else, some brand new. So, since they trust them to make something brand new, I think what they're doing is, you know, they wanted them to make a brand new title, and they're probably gonna let Insomniac work on that. I hope, man. I would hope, but I don't know what this third-party exclusive is gonna be. So, is if it would be first-party if it was a Resistance, so it's not that Silent Hill. It's still up. I'm still going to keep, you know, talking about Silent Hill. So let's go on to the next story. 100 hour PSVR MMO, MMO Zenith, The Last City is going to be out soon. Ambitious virtual reality MMO Zenith, The Last City, will release on PSVR oculus quest and rift and steam on january 27th the open game the open world game will support cross play across all platforms and will cross will cost 29.99 upon release interestingly developer 
Ramen VR has warned that January 27th is an estimated launch date for Zenith and is subject to change. We are working as hard as we can to hit it. That's what she said. The studio wrote under its announcement trailer. What is Zenith? The last city all about? Zenith tells the tale of gods and mortals scrambling to prevent cataclysmic events after one called the Fracture left things in ruins eons ago. Players will be equipped with the power of essence that allows them to become stronger while exploring the world with other players, fighting numerous villains along the way. A hundred hours of gameplay? I gotta watch some videos on it to see what, it, what, it's, what it's about. See what it look like. See what it look like. If VR stuff be fun though, I'll tell you that. VR stuff do be fun. But we, we need some PSVR 2 stuff. Just put a 2 there. Just put a 2 behind the PSVR 2. A 2. Put a 2 right there. 2. Speaking of 2, let's go to the next story. A bug. A bug, they say. Has PS3 games appearing on PS5 store with prices. Over the weekend, several Twitter users reported these reported seeing PlayStation 3 games listed on the PlayStation 5 store page accessed via the console, spurring numerous headlines and speculations about an incoming PS5 backwards compatibility feature. It didn't help that the games were listed with price tags, which led, people, which led to people believing that the recently rediscovered patent application for an extensive backwards compatibility feature and reports of Game Pass rival code named Spartacus mean that something's inbound. Unfortunately, it isn't. Not yet, anyway. As pointed out by several Reset Error and other social media users, this is an old visual bug. The prices you're looking at are old PlayStation Now prices for PS3 games from days of yore when the service used to let users rent games individually. I don't know, son. Does this rule out PS5 access compatibility with PS3, PS2, and PS1 games? I don't think it does. This is a merging story with the next story. Because the PS5 backwards compatibility for PS3, PS2, and PS1 games was teased in a patent. Renowned Sony engineer Mark Cerny has reportedly filed a patent that would seemingly allow the PS5 to play older games via backward compatibility. Specifically, the patent describes a method to change the clock frequency of a console's hardware. This would allow the newer system to run an application that is meant for an older version of the system by synchronizing the processor's operations, potentially making the PS5 backwards compatible with the PS3, PS2, and original PS1. How PS5 backwards compatibility, how, how PS5 backwards compatibility could be improved with the patent? I feel like I'm saying the word twice. While the patent doesn't mention PlayStation consoles by name, it's worth noting that Sony has been lacking in the classic games department compared to its competitors at Microsoft, which is not that big of a deal. All I would do was streamline the games I want to play. I would just keep the one console powered up and I can take the other ones and I can unplug them and put them, you know, for display purposes only for my collection. While services like PlayStation Now and, Play and Plus do offer some older games via emulation, you're out of luck when it comes to most PlayStation 2 and PSX era games. PlayStation 1. Comparatively, Xbox head Phil Spencer has been outspoken about the importance of game preservation and emulation. Blah, blah, blah. There are a lot of difficulties associated with backward compatibility for modern PlayStation consoles, of course. In the case of games from the PS3 era, era is to do with the actual architecture of the console's hardware, namely the PS3's infamous cell processor. For PS2 and earlier consoles, however, emulation seems to be the easiest route. If rumors of Sony's new PlayStation subscription service are true, we may get to see more classic PlayStation games on the PS4 and PS5 sometime soon. So. Next story. I mean, you know, PlayStation backwards compatibility would be nice, but I I bought my play I bought my PlayStation 5 so that I can play PlayStation 5 games. You know what I'm saying? 
at the at the at the the, the very least PlayStation 4 games enhanced you know so I'm not stressing you know about PlayStation 1 backwards compatibility I'm not stressing about that that's not something that I'm like oh I need that I need that I got a PlayStation 1 you guys saw me playing Silent Hill on it so well I played on my play PlayStation 2 but I have PlayStation 1 I have two of them actually two PlayStation 1s and a PlayStation 2 and the the slim PlayStation 2 and slim PlayStation 1, the tiny PlayStation 1, and I have the, the original PlayStation 1. I don't have the big PlayStation 2. I'm trying to find one at a good price that actually works, but I'll figure it out. <laughs> this next story, rumor that MotorStorm director joins Fire Sprite to direct Twisted Metal Reboot. Nice. MotorStorm game director Matt Southern has joined Fire Sprite Games as a game director on an unknown title. However, as Southern has left... Lucid Games, rumors are that he has joined Fire Sprite as game director on the Twisted Metal reboot that was transferred between the two studios at the end of last year. Why Southern is working on the Twisted Metal reboot? Southern has been working at Lucid Games since 2019 as a game director on their free-to-play vehicular combat title Destruction All-Stars. The studio had also been reported to have been working on an unannounced first-party flagship AAA IP for the PlayStation 5 that many had claimed was the Twisted Metal reboot. But this was suddenly and expecting unexpectedly transferred to fire sprite at the end of last year southern has seemingly followed the reboot to its new developer although as reset era member tamari spotted he has only confirmed on his linkedin profile that he is a game director on an unspecified project sony has yet to officially announce a new title in the twisted metal franchise he previously his previously his previous work also includes four of the five Motor Story games, starting on Motor Storm as project manager and finishing as a studio game director on Motor Storm RC. He stayed at Sony Computer Entertainment to work on Evolution Studios' last title, Drive Club, before the studio was closed by Sony. While there were stints at Ripstone and Mint Games creating titles in other genres, he returned to vehicular combat titles when he joined Lucid Games. So, I don't know, if you're clamoring for a Twisted Metal title, there could be some news, you know, imminent. So keep a watch out for that. Um, I I played the original Twisted Metal, but that was so long ago. I don't I didn't have a big connection to it because I didn't have it and I didn't actually play it that much. I mean, I played it, you know, a good amount, but not that much. So, I mean, it was fun, but, you know, I'm not attached to it like that. Not like a Silent Hill. Silent Hill, need to make that Silent Hill, yo. Let's get it. Next story. Here are the most downloaded PlayStation games of last year, 2021. Sony has released a list of the most downloaded PlayStation games of 2021. Separated by console generation and free to play, the list gives fans the big picture on last year's most popular titles. New releases such as NBA 2K22, Marvel Spider-Man, Miles Morales, and Call of Duty Vanguard were among the most downloaded titles for PS5. Meanwhile, the PS4 saw the continued popularity of older games such as Grand Theft Auto V, Minecraft, and Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. There's a big popularity difference between PS5 and PS4. While it's no surprise that different games will be popular depending on which console generation you're looking at, there seems to be almost zero overlaps between the two generations. Similar to December 2021 sales figures, Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales stood right beside Call of Duty Vanguard. There were also some key difference, differences between the US and Europe regions, namely that Europe, European players seem to enjoy games like Kena, Bridge of Spirits, and Among Us more than other AAA titles. As with past years, games like Fortnite and Call of Duty Warzone continue to dominate the free-to-play market. Both US and Europe, re Europe region saw these games as well as others like Rocket League and Genshin Impact at the top spots. Notably, newcomer Splitgate goes to fourth place in the US. You can check out the top 10 list below. Most downloaded PS5 games in the US and Canada? NBA 2K22, Call of Duty Vanguard, Miles Morales, Madden 22, Battlefield 2042, Ratchet and Clank, You're interrupting my stream, boy. Don't make me come over there. 
Ratchet and Clank at number six, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War at seven, MLB The Show at eight, um, Resident Evil Village at ninth, and Far Cry six at ten spots. I hate when I swipe that way and then this thing takes forever to get me back to my home screen. Uh, when you turn the phone off, you know, it takes everything forever to happen. There we go. I mean, my phone is two years old. Most downloaded PS5 games in Europe, FIFA 22, no surprising. Call of Duty Vanguard, FIFA 21. <laughs> what? FIFA twice? Like, come on, man. Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales at fourth. Battlefield 2042. Among Us at six. Kena. Then Far Cry 6. It takes two. And Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Most download, downloaded PS4 games in the US and Canada. Grand Theft Auto 5. Call of Duty Black Ops. Minecraft. NBA 2K22. Vanguard. And Madden 22. NBA 2K22. Twice? That's that's a typo. Red Dead Redemption 2, <laughs> Emma Buddha Show 21, Mortal Kombat 11. In Europe, it was FIFA 22, Grand Theft Auto 5, Minecraft at number 3, FIFA 21. <laughs> We're like, what? <laughs> How's FIFA 21 and 22 in the top 10 most downloaded? They're like, come on. Black Ops Cold War, The Crew 2. Let me do this real quick. Red Dead Redemption 2. The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt, Game of the Year Edition, Call of Duty Vanguard, and The Forest. It's no surprise with the free-to-play games that Fork Knife would be at number one, Warzone number two, Rocket League, Splitgate, Apex, Splitgate over... First of all, let me tell you something. I am thick of all these games like Fortnite and Splitgate and Apex. And, like, stop, man. Just stop with it. about this like i'm sick of fortnite and stuff like that stop just stop it people just stop it next up next story the ps5 shortage causes sony to continue making ps4s which is annoying because we need this console to be laid in to rest so we can focus on playstation 5 games because i want some playstation games that are playstation 5 only because of the possibilities with the graphics and the power Come on. Amid continued PS5 shortages, Sony has decided to continue PS4 production in order to counter supply chain issues. Sony's decision to continue production of the last gen console stands in stark contrast to earlier statements in which CEO Jim Ryan wished to make a quick transition to the PS5. While Sony had not officially announced any plans to completely end production of the PS4, an anonymous insider reveals that they had considered doing so by the end of 2021. Why make more PS4s and not PS5s? If you're thinking, wait, why make more PS4s if there's a shortage of PS5s? You're not alone. Essentially, Sony's trying to offset demand for the PS5 by producing more PS4s. A million more within 2022 to be exact. Not only is the PS4 simpler to make and uses less advanced chips, but it's also seen as a budget-friendly console that could serve as an alternative to difficult to buy PS5. The increase in production also serves a second purpose, negotiating better deals with manufacturers, rather than attempting to no negotiate prices for a comparatively small amount of PS5s, Sony can essentially negotiate for bulk buy prices by including an additional million PS4s in their manufacturing deals. Most people have managed to buy a PS5. Speaking to Bloomberg, a Sony representative confirmed that the company would continue manufacturing the PS4 in 2022. Just a year ago, Sony also stated that it would end production of all but one version of the PS4. In other news, oh yeah, we talked about that one earlier. But yeah, man.
You gotta text me. Text me it. You gotta text me because. I'm, I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to remember exactly what you mean. Because you did tell me a lot of stuff. But, yeah, I mean, when it's hard to, to, to manufacture one console, I, I, I can. Oh, wow. So, mm, secret stream, <laughs> but yeah, um, goodness. So yeah, I mean, I can understand them trying to continue making money off the PS4 because it's hard to get PS5s. I mean, if you can't get the the if you're on a chip shortage and you can't get the components to make a PS5 then what else are you going to do? You know, you don't want to not make money. People are still going to buy a PS4. You know, there's people who can't get a PS5 who don't have a PS4. You know, there's still good games on the PS4 to play. You know, these a lot of these games are coming out for PS4 as well. So, I get it. I'm, I'm just wanting some PS5 exclusives. Because I know how they could look. Compared to like a cross cross platform game. All right, peace out. Good night. Make sure you got your clothes ready already. And go use the bathroom before you go to sleep. Newbie, you said PS four point five. You saying that it's greater than the PS five or the PS five is great? I I don't remember if. If that means that the PS5 is greater than the PS4.5. It's been a long time since I've seen those greater than, less than, equal to equations. All right? But the PS5 is the king, newbie. PS5 is the king. You know, it's just because of COVID, man. Like, a lot of factories don't have the people. A lot of these places don't have the people, the workforce, to manufacture these things. These, these components for these chips and stuff. And they can't get them out. We can't get them out there. Yeah, it is. It's rough, man. Like, COVID is affecting a lot of things, man. It's affecting a, a lot of um, people's lives and the way of life. And, of course, it's going to affect companies, big companies, big business, the gaming industry, movie industry. It's affecting everything, man. You know, so we just got to try to be patient and... You know, we got to be understanding. But there's plenty of games to play, no matter what console you're playing on. You're playing on PS4, PS5. There's a lot of good stuff out there. So, you know, relax, no stressing. You know, one day it'll be fixed. Yo, these, this, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know if it's the reflections or I don't know. Something is, it's like it goes and it comes. I feel like it's a setting on OBS. Yes, and resellers. Resellers are frustrating me. Even though I got my PlayStation day one, my PS5 day one, just knowing that there's a lot of people out there who aren't enjoying my experience with the PlayStation 5 because of jerks buying a whole bunch of them and then reselling them at ridiculous prices. Knowing that we're in a pandemic, 
So people have been struggling to find work or, you know, not able to work as much because of the pandemic. And a lot of people's affected in many different ways financially. That if they had the money to pay for the PlayStation 5, that's a stretch as it is. But then for somebody to sell it for a thousand dollars, seven fifty, that's twice in or more the price. So, you know, I I can't get with these people, man, doing this crazy stuff, man. Like, I mean, there's a lot more crazy stuff going on in the world, but there's like things that shouldn't be stressful. People are making stressful, but there's enough stressful things going on in this world. This world has been crazy, man. There's enough of that stuff going on for people to be doing stuff like that. You got to get it together, people. We got to get it together. You got to band together and be, you know, be not kinder and loving and caring to more to one each other a lot more, man. Like, especially as gamers, us gamers should be, you know, doing things like helping each other out. Oh, bro, you don't got a PS5? Uh, instead of buying me buying 10,000 PS5s and selling them for a bunch, I'm going to buy a whole bunch. And I'm gonna sell them for retail price so that scalpers don't get them. And I get to, you know, help out, you know, fellow gamers and it feel good. If I had the money and, and I saw the, the supply and I bought like five PlayStations, I'd sell them on eBay, I'd sell them on wherever I could sell them for the retail price. And the catch would be follow me on Twitch, <laughs> subscribe to my YouTube channel. You know, watch my stream, check out my YouTube videos. You know what I'm saying? That that would be my catch. That's all I would want, you know. And if they do, they do. If they don't, they don't. I I don't learn. I don't I don't lose nothing. You know, I just have opportunity to gain, you know. Tell your friends about me. Tell your friends to watch my stream. Follow, you know, follow me on Twitch. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Stuff like that. <clears throat> but nah, they want to sell it for profit. If you want to get you a hustle to try to make some money because you're affected by the pandemic, don't do something that's going to affect other people financially who's affected by the pandemic. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell their family and all the families. Click on the link. You know what I'm saying? Type in the dad level in YouTube. Type in Pablo Man 44 on Twitch. You know what I'm saying? Hit those, hit the follows, the subscribe buttons and stuff like that. Hit some likes, you know? <laughs> Let everybody do it. Let everybody. It'd be, a, it'd be a family affair, you know? Make it make it movie night every night, you know? Family gather around at the dinner table. Turn on place, turn on Pablo's Play Level podcast on Mondays. On Wednesdays, we working on the backlog. I'll be playing random games. You know what I'm saying? I missed Friday's stream because we went to see Spider-Man. And out of respect, because I don't know if you saw it, Vaughn, yet. I'm not going to talk about it today. Yes, I saw Eternals. I saw it when it came out on Disney+. Plus. I, I fell asleep that night and woke up and saw it the next day. Because <laughs> I, I was planning on watching it. But I fell asleep. I was like, I'm tired. I'm not going to sleep through the movie, so I'm going to watch it tomorrow. I got up, got me some cereal, and sat and watched it. I was chilling. Got me um, my Kashi cereal. No sugar added. Whole wheat. Whole grain wheat. Like 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 the um, shredded wheat with, with raisins in it. No added sugars. Perfect. Yeah, Batman dies on the way home. It's sad, man. I was like, Bruce, no. <laughs> oh, spoiler alert. Spider-Man is in No Way Home. I'm sorry, I spoiled it. Spider-Man is in it. Oh, wait, it's Spider-Man No Way Home. You already knew that. Never mind. You waiting for it to be on Disney Plus? I'm, I got some sad news for you. <laughs> I, got some, I got some majorly sad news for you. That movie ain't going to be on Disney Plus till like next year. And I mean 2023 next year. 
and I mean that in all sincerity that movie is not going to be on Disney Plus at least not this year there are currently none of the Spider-Man MCU releases on Disney Plus not a single one of them not a single one but it's a Marvel Sony movie just remember I don't lie go to Disney Plus right now there's not a single MCU Spider-Man movie on Disney Plus right now. Not a single one. I am right. I know. And I finished watching Hawkeye. I watched The Eternals and then I binge watched Hawkeye. And I was sitting here, right here in this very spot, right here, clicking on, you know, like, you know, all I got left is Spider-Man now. Let me see if there's some showtimes in nearby. They social distance the movie theater. So, and you pick your seats. You have to pick, you know, pay for your seats. You have to pick them. They don't allow people to pick seats next to each other. But I took the kids. We had a whole row by ourselves. There's like seven feet distance in between rows in the movie theater down here. And there was nobody sitting directly behind us. They were like off to the side behind us. So it was like completely like it wasn't a lot of people in the theater. Like there was people scattered in different spots, but they social distance everybody. So yeah, you gotta watch Hawkeye first though. So binge watch Hawkeye and you should go like either early show, like early in the morning where it's gonna be just you. Maybe you and Neil will just will be the only ones in there. Or you gotta go real late for the same reason. But the movie's been out for a while, so it's, there's effectively going to be less people watching it anyway. But you want to go at a time where there's guaranteed to be less people normally. Yeah, I mean, bring your um, disinfectant spray all over the seats. Keep your mask on. Bring your. I had hand hand sanitizer. You know what I'm saying? Kids, they 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 had popcorn. Came came with the ticket. Down here, the, the popcorn comes with the ticket. They give a popcorn. And not a small one. It was like a large popcorn. Or a medium popcorn. It was a pretty big bag. It was a decent size. Like, it was like... I was surprised. Which theater, I think, is the cleanest in Westchester? Um, Probably Cross County. Surprisingly enough. I think the Cross County's um, theater is probably the cleanest one. Um, not New Rock City. And plus their prices are more. Um, I don't know. How, I've never been to Alamo. And are they even showing it there? Because I don't know. They're a little different. Let's see, where else? Where else is there a movie theater in Westchester now? White Plains? Maybe White Plains. You might, you might have better luck going to White Plains to see it as far as there not being a lot of people in there. But it, it may be the same for Cross County. Yeah, City Center. That's right, City Center as well. Um, But I wouldn't do... Well, City Center, how much traffic do they get in that place? City Center might be a good one too. It might be empty in that one too. But, you know, it's, it's close. So... I would I would say White Plains would be the um I think White 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 Plains is it's city, which one is City Center is that White Plains or is that Ridge Hill Oh it's White Plains so Ridge Hill um if they're open that one might be the most packed I think Ridge Hill might be the one that's the most packed White Plains might be low key um. And it might be pretty clean. I, the last time I went to either of those two, I felt no difference in how clean the theaters were. So I don't know. Yeah, Rich Hills are no. What Rich Hill is closed, or because what I'm saying, it might be the one that's the most packed. I think Rich Hill, if it's open, yeah, and the parking ain't free. That's right. Yeah, and I think I think it'll be the most packed one, even though the parking ain't free. Neither is the city center. So. Cause if you go to White Plains, it ain't 
it ain't free either. So Cross County, if you're trying to get free parking. And like I said, the last time I went to both of those theaters, I found no difference in the cleanliness. So I will go to Cross County. Just like I said, catch the first show. Milan, you don't live in Yonkers no more. We live in Florida. We have no idea if they change the parking to free again. You know, they probably put it back to paid parking. He lives, he lives there. He knows. You know, it's free. How do you know it's free? You don't live. You know what? <laughs> anyway, let's go on to the next story. But yeah, you got to watch um, Hawkeye. Really good. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that. Spoilers. Um, Hawkeye is in Hawkeye. <laughs> you have your sources. What up? Whatever. Rumor, Persona 6 will be a PlayStation 5 exclusive. Hmm. A lot of these, I'm telling you, these companies want to work with PlayStation. And I I wouldn't be surprised if more start jumping because I'm telling you, I feel like Microsoft's focus on Xbox Game Pass is turning developers off because it's like, how am I going to make the money I would make dropping my title? I have to, it's a pool of money that we, they all got to share from the subscription. You said, just stop, please. You telling her to stop or me to stop? Because because I'm spoiling the movie. Uh, another spoiler. I'm sorry, I have to do it. There's bow and arrow scenes in Hawkeye. <laughs> there's, there's some scenes with bows and arrows and stuff like that, you know. Uh, you know, spoiler alert. Yeah. <laughs> I'm stating the obvious. All right. I'm Captain Obvious. <laughs> it's obvious. Hawkeye is in Hawkeye. He has to be in Hawkeye. It's Hawkeye. And of course, his weapon is a bow and arrow. So, of course, there's going to be bow and arrow scenes. <laughs> and I'm not going to slip up. But you got to watch. It is good. It is good. I'm not I'm not going to spoil. There's so much that has gone on that you're missing <laughs> With Hawkeye and Spider Man, you missed so much. <laughs> you better stay off the internet, man. If you, uh, you know how hard it was being a Twitch streamer who does a play level podcast who talks about the latest in gaming, t movies, shows, and stuff like that, news and rumors to avoid anything Spider Man related. The night before he watched Eternals, he wanted to say something from YouTube. See, this is, see, you see, I don't get into that. Yo, as soon as I see, if I haven't seen the show or the movie and I'm scrolling and I see any slight mention of the movie or the show or anyone like actor or actress that would be in that movie or show, I just go real fast away from it. I don't want to hear anything about any of it. Oh my goodness. I was so like, and and it's everywhere, yo. Everywhere you go, every TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, people on Twitch, people in the street. Y'all standing in a movie theater, and we waiting, and people are being let out of their movie. And one was a Spider Man. One was you know one was the the previous um, showing of Spider Man. And people were leaving. I was hoping, you know how people get at the end of the movie. They start talking about what they saw. Oh my goodness, this is crazy. Do you see this part? And isn't I was like, please don't let nobody slip up and spoil this movie. Right, we right at, we right here. We we waiting for them to just clean the popcorn up, spray the spray the place down. They had this whole system where they 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 spray the um the seats and stuff. They had a whole a whole like clean cleaning um thing going on in there. Like we just waiting for them to finish that. So that we can go watch this movie. Don't let it get spoiled right there. Like right, like when you press the button, he want to talk. Like shut up, yo. Just watch the movie. Whatever you know, that's what you know. I don't want to know. I don't want to join you. But the Persona series has become one of the most popular RPG series in recent years. Had to go back to the story. 
most recently with the critically acclaimed Persona 5 and subsequent Persona 5 Royale. Royal. Looks like Royal. There's no E. Royal. While developer Atlas has already confirmed that they're working on a sequel title, new rumors indicate that Persona 6 might be a PS5 exclusive game. This is of particular note as Persona 5 was initially released for the PS3 and PS4 back in 2016. A Persona game for the next generation. The information comes from known Persona leaker and YouTuber Nate the Hate, who reveals some key information about the series' future. Specifically, Nate the Hate mentions that it is likely the Persona 6 announcement will happen sometime during the ongoing 25th anniversary celebration of the Persona series. In addition to Persona 6 PlayStation exclusivity, the leaker also claims that Persona 4 Golden will also come to PlayStation consoles and Nintendo Switch sometime in 2022. I've never played exactly i was trying but i had the kids so you know we were talking and stuff and you know it was, it was it was rough like even doing this right now i'm trying to make sure that you know uh they don't at the bottom it says in other news from F spider man far from home or uh, spider man no way home uh this this and this <laughs> it won't spoil it for me but it'll spoil it for you i got your back though <laughs> But if you've, I've never played a Persona um, game, but I hear they're good and you know, they're one of those big titles. So it gonna be PlayStation exclusive would be kind of big. That'd be big news, like for real. So I guess we'll wait and see. Next story. Call of Duty Vanguard and Warzone issues will be fixed. Activision promises. Sure you do. Next story. I have no faith that those games will be fixed. They are broken games. <laughs> and I don't expect them to be finished, to be fixed. Dying Light 2 DLC and post-launch content promised for five years. Of course. Techland has guaranteed Dying Light 2 DLC and post-launch post -launch content for at least five years. The developer took to Twitter to promise fans ongoing support less than a week after it announced that it will take roughly five hundred hours to fully complete the game this content will be new stories locations and game events and all this fun stuff you love yes i think they're trying to save face because they came out and they thought ha our game our game will have 500 hours to fully complete and people were like why why is this so long i don't want to play for 500 hours and they were like, what, 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 wait a minute, you, you don't want it, uh, uh, we're gonna have five years, five, another five, five years, we're gonna have new content release, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is Cyberpunk 2077 fix? Yes, for the most part, yes, it's a good game, if you haven't played it yet, I, I, I recommend it, I re recommend playing it, forget the hype, the hate, and all that you've heard it's a good game it's a fun game and i didn't have any experience with bugs just one that was it it was when i first played it and then after that nothing else i mean other games have done that too so i wasn't stressing about it i like to go at games with my own thoughts and dreams and hopes and own opinions looking for that i don't want to go at a game because somebody else said it was good or bad if i got interested in the game from its trailers and reading on it you know on internet and stuff like that used to be in game informer magazine and stuff if i got interested in a game like that then and I'm still interested when they're about to release it. Like, I was interested in Battlefield 2042 until they said no campaign. That's what made me not buy it. Nothing else. Because I don't want to play that. I don't want to spend money for that. For that mode. I don't want to play Battle Royale like that. I'm not a big fan of it. I don't like it that much. It's annoying to me. There's so much fun, entertaining compelling stories beautiful atmospheres and all these wonderful games out there but people are wasting their lives playing call of duty fortnite apex and games of the such all day every day 
I wish people would go and experience these other games and stop just playing exclusively Call of Duty and Fortnite and Apex and stuff like that. <laughs> what do you mean it doesn't work? I worked on that all day. It should work. Every time I tested it, it worked. Did you press the button correctly? Yo, I'll be so tight. I will be so tight. Because I worked on that all day. Let's see. Where are we at? Uh, play a little podcast, edit. This is the one, man. I don't, I don't understand. Let's, let's do what I always do. I emulate. I don't know. I don't know if there's a delay. <clears throat> the last time you said that, and then you did it, it worked again. So maybe there's a delay, or maybe you didn't finish pressing the subscribe using your Amazon Prime, your Twitch Prime sub, you know. So check to make sure it all went through because <clears throat> by this, it's fixed. Like it, it, it's supposed to work. Like that worked, so it should work. So I, I don't know. It said successful. It didn't even come up in the chat. So I don't know. I have no idea. But I hope I hope it fixes. I mean, these issues with things like that are annoying because I see so many people having no issues. Oh, oh there it goes. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Blue Devon just joined forces to fight the evil nugget thieves. We're joining forces to fight the evil nugget thieves. <laughs> yes. See? It worked. I've worked on that all day. I better have worked. I would have been so mad. <laughs> Thank you for the subscription. You had to close the app and reopen it. Maybe it's your app. So that's that's what I'm that's what I think it is. Maybe it's your app. Milan, if you're still watching, do the same. Close your app and reopen it, because I don't know if yours popped up earlier. So close your Twitch app, like close it out, like swipe it out, and then go back in. And then press to share it. Oh, yeah, you have to share that. You have to subscribe. Yeah, you do have to do that. Oh yeah, I have to I have to catch Ollie's stream and resubscribe. Actually, I think I did. I don't think I I think I have to this it should be coming up to resubscribe again. I have to remember that. But yeah. Dying Light 2, 500 hours to fully complete. They said that's with all the side quests and all the extra stuff or whatever. But um They're like talking about 200 hours. For the main story or something like that. I forgot. They said something like that. Let me see. Does it say it here? Yeah, it doesn't say it here. But I read that story last week. So check my last podcast. It's um, it's up on my YouTube channel. Last week's podcast. It's up on my YouTube channel. We talked about it, I believe, last week. 
Um, they took on 500 hours. Um, but for the but that's for everything, for like the side quests and all that. But 200 hours still is a lot. It takes 300 hours off. But man, you got 300 hours worth of side quests. I don't remember what I think it was 200 hours for the for the just the main story. But all the extra content and stuff is that with the DLC that's supposed to go over the over the next five years. But that's still a lot, y'all. I mean, I'm getting the game. I, I hope it's you I hope they didn't go too far away from the original one because the original one was my jam But we'll see Let's go to the next story Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 releasing early due to Vanguard's poor sales. This is a rumor Look at this face <laughs> That is the perfect face. That's the face of Yeah, it might happen yeah, that might be what happens. That's the face of team. They can't get it together, so we gotta come out early. <laughs> Vanguard's poor sale. Just had to plug in my tablet real quick. Um, my phone is charged enough. But I tell you this, man. This 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 is what I'm gonna say about that. I'm, I'm going to say that I believe that people are focusing too much on the multiplayer aspects of these games and giving it bad reviews that this game has a campaign and I bet you that campaign is fun Call of Duty's campaigns have always been fun you know and that's why I was torn that Battlefield won't have a campaign because I knew that was gonna be fun it was gonna be amazing but no campaign so no dice that's frustrating you know i thought that you know the campaigns would <clears throat> would be nice that's why i didn't buy the game i thought they was gonna have a campaign but i think people are focusing too much on this multiplayer version of the game and frankly yo it's tiring yo it's boring like it's stupid like stop playing it stop playing warzone yo get off of warzone and go play something else Play something that's a full game. Like, go through a game. Stop being afraid to go through a whole game and complete a game. All right? Play something else. Stop. Put Fortnite away. Just, just delete it off your console like I did. And play something else. There's a lot of stuff. There's horror. There's RPGs. There's fantasy. There's, there's some happy stuff. Some deep stuff. Some serious stuff. There's some, you know, there's some co-op stuff that you can still play with friends but not against each other that you can have a whole lot of fun with just please do something else gosh i'm not even gonna read this story because we already know modern warfare 2 will be releasing early because vanguard sucks and they're trying to make money they're trying to make their money that's all they care about that's why they make these games they're only worried about money and that's why playstation first party studios make the beautiful wonderful games that they make and they make good money off of them because they care about the games that's why they make quality stuff so get it together companies get it together hitman 3 freelancer mode play hitman will add risk and roguelike this spring Ooh. hitman 3 will get a second year of content that includes a brand new roguelike freelancer mode the single player mode will mean players have to plan ahead and stock up on the right equipment or face losing it all on an unsuccessful mission. The mode will be added to Hitman 3 this spring. I need to play more of Hitman 2. Does Freelancer include new locations? Freelancer mode is centered around a brand new customizable safe house map that Agent 47 can call his own. As players complete contracts in this mode, they'll unlock more areas of the safe house and more items that can be used to customize those areas. There'll be a wardrobe to try on all of Agent 47's outfits and a firing range to test weapons. However, the safe house also serves a practical purpose. Agent 47 no longer has the assistance of the ICA and needs to do his own planning before he begins a mission. Access from the safe house, the mission hub is where players can see all of the available freelancer campaigns. Each of these focuses on a criminal enterprise that must be taken down across several missions in different locations. 
The missions can be completed in any order, although the final mission will always include the leader of the Enterprise, regardless of the chosen location. Once they're eliminated, Agent 47 receives his reward and returns to the safe house. Each of the existing campaign missions have been switched up to fit the new mode. They have new NPCs, such as suppliers that can provide weapons and, custom and consumable items. On the other hand, other NPCs will snitch on you to the leaders while rival assassins will try to steal your thunder. There will also be safes and stashes to find. However, failure means 847, Agent 47 will lose his gear. If his equipment doesn't return to the safe house or it's Agent 47, it is lost forever. Suppliers can help to restock those items, including the rarer weapon rewards. Wow, that's danger. I'd have to put the the um, difficulty settings on low, <laughs> the like beginner. I, I hate losing my stuff and not getting it back. I'd be so frustrated. So it's saying, will Hitman 3 get a new map? It did say. A new map currently with the working title of Rocky will be released later in the year. Details on the map are very scarce, but we did get the briefest of glimpses at a nighttime location with a rope bridge spanning a deep river gorge. So yeah, um, Hitman 3 is getting a lot of a lot of love. I want to play it. I haven't played it yet because I need to play Hitman 2 some more. I don't have to finish it, but I do need to play it some more. I need I need to. To, to put some more time into it the game is fun so people we're playing call of duty and all that stuff put it down delete it play play hitman hitman's a real fun game still a shooter it's more you know stealth and tactical and stuff like, you know it's more stealth based and you gotta you gotta plan and you know it's not you know just going and shooting and running around and slide and run and slide and open up crates and and pick up guns and running with the gun like this and keep swapping things out and you know it's not it's not all that it's not that kind of stuff that gets i'm telling you well, well, how are you not tired of that already i'd be tired of it that's why i don't play it much so, but you gotta you gotta play this game i play so many different games that's why i haven't finished certain games that's why my backlog is so so big because i like to play a bunch of different games so definitely got to check that out can't wait for that next story rumor star wars night of knights of the old republic that's what it is remain remake will swap turn-based combat for god of war style action which would be awesome star wars night of the old republic remake is being built from the ground up to bring it into the modern age of gaming not only does this mean a graphics upgrade, it seems like the gameplay is getting quite an overhaul too. According to the latest rumors, the remake will be scrapping the original's take on a turn-based combat system for a more action-based approach instead. How will the remake's gameplay change? Stars, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic remake is being built from the ground up with the latest tech to match the groundbreaking standard of innovation established by the original. YouTuber Mr. Maddie Plays claims his sources have said the remake may no longer have combat that features some form of taking turns, instead opting for a completely action-based combat system. The system is apparently drawing inspiration from games like God of War and Neo 2. This information was backed up by a couple of job listings from Aspire Media to work on a AAA RPG. The first was for a combat designer where the ideal candidate would create engaging encounters in a rich and immersive world and needs experience in defining combat roles and crafting AI behaviors to build interesting enemies and bosses. The second is for an AI engineer who will specifically be working on a AAA action RPG. While there is always the chance that the developer is just upgrading the existing combat system, other remakes like Final Fantasy VII Remake have proven that changing a combat system is possible without being detrimental to the game. Regardless, take the rumor with a pinch of salt. Of course you take the, every every rumor you take with a pinch of salt but that would be awesome if they did it because then you know i would play something like that not that i'm against turn-based stuff i don't know what my turn-based stamina is southern justice what, boogie, boogie. what's good if places can do this ps4 3 and so on then 
Give me the Wii games to the Nintendo Switch, Nintendo. Exactly. Nobody talks about that, Southern Justice. Nobody talks about that. How Nintendo kind of really doesn't care about their their consumers and their fan base. They kind of really don't care. Like they they give you whatever they feel like giving you. You know? And when they do give it to you, they give it to you in a weird, expensive way. So, yeah, I think the Nintendo Switch should be playing every Nintendo title in the history of ever. There should be a way to play every Nintendo title. You know where Nintendo could kill it since their consoles always are much cheaper and not as, you know, not as powerful, so they save money on that. Where they could spend the extra money would be to make an all-in-one console that has the the DS, the Game Boy, and all the cartridges slots at the top, so you can pop the cartridges in. It has, you know, backwards compatibility with Wii games. It has the slot for the Wii, you know, however Wii games were out, and I never played a Wii. Were they discs? If they were discs, then scrap that part. But, you know, they should do something like that. At least have a limited edition for all the pocket consoles. Because all their pocket consoles, if they had a slot that could fit all the cartridges, I think that would be pretty smart. At least a limited edition that would do that. You know what I'm saying? Do something for, for, for the Nintendo, you know, fans and stuff like that. They always left kind of in the dust. Like, they... Just getting Bluetooth compatibility for headsets, I think. I think I heard something like that. And the the in, the internet stuff, like Wi-Fi stuff, you know, playing stuff like that, it's kind of sucks. They probably couldn't do the pro because of the semiconductor. I I you're probably right. You probably are right. You know, and that sucks because they needed to. They. To be honest, they should have never came out with the OLED. They should have just said, you know what, let's just continue selling the Switch. And they could have saved money on the manufacturing and just, you know, kept making more Switches. People were still buying them. And waited for the opportunity to get the Switch Pro out. All right, we can't talk about No Way Home here because my brother's watching the stream. And he has not seen the movie. He hasn't even seen Hawkeye yet. All right. But I can tell you my rating. What do you want it? Do you want it out of five or out of ten? You want it, you know, on a scale from one to ten? Or you want um, out of five stars? What do I rate it? Scale from one to ten? What do I rate No Way Home? Uh, a ten. And, and if you don't agree, you should be able to understand why. We can't really talk about why. <laughs> we can't talk about why. But I was mad hyped. And I was happy. And I... I and I tell you, from jump, like when, when Tom Holland came on board to be Spider-Man and he was in Civil War, I was like, oh, snap, Spider-Man is back. And then when they showed more of him, he had his own movie, I was like, yo, this kid does a really good job at this. They got him young. So that, that's smart because then there's longevity. You're not getting another old dude so that four years from now when another movie come out, he's really old and you're really thinking about rebooting. You know? You think it's a seven? Yeah, you can't tell why. <laughs> but Tom Holland did an excellent job. Like, he's my favorite Spider-Man. Because he hits every single check for me. Is he a good Spider-Man? Yes, he's good with the combat. He looks the part, even though he's young, but it's good because Spider-Man started young. You know what I'm saying? Um, he's a great actor. He gets the emotional parts, like the 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 parts where there's a lot of emotion and crying and stuff. He hits those on point. I think better than the rest of them. Andrew Garfield, I have a very um I have a, a, a very unpopular opinion. I think Andrew Garfield was the second best Spider-Man. Because Tobey Maguire, to me, wasn't Spider-Man, like, Peter Parker-like. He did good with the Spider-Man stuff, but that was CGI. 
but him being Peter Parker is just never hit for me. Like the first original three movies, I thought were awesome, but I enjoyed as Peter Parker and Spider Man Andrew Garfield better. But then when Tom Holland came along, I was like, yo, this kid hit it right. That's what she said. He 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 got it right on every he checked every box for me for Spider Man. You know what I'm saying? And to make his character go in with the rest of the characters in the MCU with the Avengers and stuff, you know. So what that Sun China created? <laughs> I'm talking about old stuff, you know, old Spider-Man stuff. I'm, I'm talking about the old, old stuff, you know. You know, I, I I've had these debates over the years, man. Like I always thought Andrew Garfield was the second best Spider-Man when Tom, since Tom Holland came around. Because he was my favorite one until Tom Holland. Like it was always, oh, is it Toby Maguire or Andrew Garfield? It was always Andrew Garfield for me, but you know. It's an artificial sun that can supposedly give free energy forever. <laughs> That's crazy. They need to st they need to stop playing. They need to watch it, y'all. All right, they're gonna play with something that's gonna explode and it's gonna cause a cat catastrophe. I mean, you don't have the Avengers to to save us. As if they know how hot the real sun is. I'm just you know that's another that's a me and Ali had this conversation earlier, you know. If they didn't even know how hot the real sun is, you know. You think China forgot to watch Spider-Man 2? They forgot to watch The Eternals. They forgot to watch a lot of MCU stuff, yo. Cause <laughs> they playing with they playing with like they playing with stuff that they shouldn't like, I don't know. Like there's some things that's just like, yo, chill, just don't do that. No. The repercussions could be catastrophic. Like just just chill out. You know. You said you saw that? Talk about that. <laughs> oh, we're going to talk about it. Give me one second. Let's see. What's the next story? Oh, that that is the last story. The next story would be Blue Box Game Studio. So before I get into checking out um, Blue Box Game Studios, really recent tweets to see if they even have any. Wait, Southern Justice, you didn't watch Eternals? You serious? How did you watch Spider-Man but not... You see, this what I, I tried to tell... I, I told Ethan at my job that, dude, you got to watch Eternals. Then you got to watch Hawkeye up until the fifth episode. But you can watch the sixth episode. But the sixth episode came after Spider-Man did. So... But you can watch the, the sixth episode without it spoiling anything from, from Spider-Man. But the proper order was to watch the first five episodes of Hawkeye and then watch Spider-Man, then watch the sixth episode of Hawkeye. But it's not necessary. You know, it's not necessary. Nothing overlaps with spoilers or anything like that. Not even like, you know, end credit scenes or anything like that. So. Yeah, I mean, that's the order in which they came out. But I, I think, to be honest, I think that um, that's only because of, you know, the time releases of Hawkeye and the date that Spider-Man came out. So I don't think, I think that you can watch all six episodes of Hawkeye and then watch Spider-Man like I did. Like I said, it, did, it didn't spoil, one didn't spoil the other. One didn't ruin the other. There was nothing that, you know... There's one thing that they had in common, but it had nothing to do with the sport. Like, so like, like it didn't like, it didn't affect either way you watch it. Yeah, all, all the episodes of Hawkeye were already recorded. So I, I, I think, you know, I, it, I'm telling you, it didn't like, there was nothing. I was sitting in Spider-Man saying, oh man, I already learned that in Hawkeye. No, there was nothing. There was one thing that they had in common, but it doesn't matter how you watch it. It's not gonna, it's not gonna, one's not gonna affect the other. No. In terms of fire, what reviews they give, that's crazy. Wait, 
I didn't I didn't see the thing about the reviews. Hold on, let me scroll up. Anyone see an interview with Josh with Josh Whedon? <laughs> Make sure you check out my, my YouTube channel, The Dad Level. It has every week's Play Level podcast and also some fun videos of me playing horror games with my family. I played with Halira, uh, a game called um, In Silence. And then my son, ZZ Boy, decided he wanted to play because it's not scary. You need to go check out that video and you'll see how wrong he was. Moon Knight, you didn't watch... You said you didn't watch the trailer? I didn't watch it either. Moon Knight. I haven't I haven't seen the trailer for Moon Knight. That's that's the next one. Um which one is next? Is it Moon Knight or is it is it gonna be She-Hulk? Which one is which one is next? I don't know which one's next. I know the next movie is gonna be um Doctor Strange. That's the next movie, I believe. So it dropped earlier. The trailer or the show? Oh, Moonlight March 30th. All right. Oh, so they give us time. So Vaughn, you got some time to watch um Hawkeye and Spider-Man. And and Southern Justice, you got a little time to watch um Eternals. I'm I'm saying you've watched Hawkeye though, right? Which I'll tell you gotta watch these things in order, man. They they there's spoilers for the previous stuff. Final episode will be May 4th. Wait, really? So if it comes out March 30th, when seven days from then would be April 6th, and then the 13th, and then the 20th, and then the 27th. Oh, six episodes then? Okay. Wow. So I will be watching it around May 4th because I like to um Yo, you missing out. They were all good. You didn't watch Hawkeye, you didn't watch Loki or Falcon? Loki was really good. Falcon was really good. You have to watch it, yo. What does bugging mean? Um <laughs> you're crazy. <laughs> so he's like it's like saying, you're crazy for not watching it. <laughs> oh, you watched just Loki and Falcon? Did you watch WandaVision? That's a good one. That's another good one. But you have your Hawkeye is really good, y'all. Watch your when you watch it, you'll see. You'll be like, oh, this is good. It is a good show. You gotta watch it, man. And you gotta get the whole story, yo. You don't want to skip stuff, man. <laughs> yeah, did you see Black Widow? Because that's another excellent movie that you had to have seen, yo. If you didn't see it, man, like you slipping, brother. <laughs> it's on Disney Plus, so. So they didn't take it. No, they didn't take it off. It's still there. I saw it on there today. But. That's you talking about um You talking about um her sister, uh Black Widow sister sister? That's what you're talking about, right? The blonde one. Yeah, she was fun in um Black Widow. Um next topic. So uh Blue Box Game Studios here. Uh <laughs> let's see what their recent tweets are. <laughs> Okay, so no. So check this out. This is what frustrates me about this this whole Blue Box Team Studio thing. And this is why I think it's a whole ruse for um, Silent Hill and Metal Gear or, and or both. They got something planned. They're, they're just a front studio, I feel like. Tech demo will be available inside the real-time experience app. A notification will be sent, will be send, they meant sent, once the patch is ready. 
this was December 5th. I mean, 25th. We are now at January 17th. No tweet since. No. Oh, excuse me. Um, on December 26th. People really need to calm down. The toxicity is really creating a lot of pressure and stress. I get it. You are pissed, but we're working hard to deliver something you can enjoy. And that takes time. Sorry, but this had to be said. It didn't. And neither did your tweet about the real-time experience app and the tech demo. Because nobody was checking for it. Because you've been given empty promises and lying and doing funny stuff and being weird all this time so people are just waiting for something to actually come out that's what people are waiting for they're waiting for something to actually come out let me follow fire sprite but nothing has come out let me follow island wake too because i really want to see that i really want to play that game that game is probably gonna be crazy so chill out and cut it out all right blue box game studios that's gonna wrap up what don't mess up exactly that's gonna wrap up the play level podcast we can continue to dodge the topic of um <laughs> of is this person gonna be in any of the other shows or movies or anything or what is going on with this show and this movie did you watch this one? We're going to continue dodging these very shaky topics because people haven't seen certain shows and certain movies, and we don't want to spoil. I try not to be a spoiler here, but I can't promise I'm going to hold on to that for that much longer <clears throat> because I so want to talk about what happened in Spider-Man. So bad. So bad. <laughs> but, you know, I have people I can talk about about it to um, who, you know, we won't talk on stream you know it has been out for a while so i wouldn't be the first person to, to put spoilers out on the internet all right the movie came out a few weeks ago so you gotta get with it man you gotta hurry up and watch it you know the next opportunity you get man just bring all your disinfectant sprays and wipes and wear your masks and just take a shower and wash your clothes after you get home Go to the movie theater early in the morning when there ain't nobody there. Yes, watch Eternals, man. It's, it's really good. It's really good because I re there's something really big that happened around the end of uh, at the end of Eternals that I was watching another YouTuber talk about how that could affect every other MCU show and movie moving forward. And wondering how they're gonna get around it so please so that the next time I stream we can touch on it before I get into playing any games I'll be streaming here Wednesday as usual Wednesday night um, I'll be here I'll be playing you know I'll play something out of my backlog I'm trying to you know catch up on my backlog before new games come out so that's what I'm trying to do I don't have to finish certain games I just want to play them enough to say all right I had fun with this I experienced this I can move on, move on to a new game. Doesn't mean I'm not going to go back to it. I unplugged my headphones. Give me a second. I can't hear Jack. Doesn't mean I'm not going to go back to it. It just means that I'm satisfied and I'm able to move on to another title so I can enjoy something else. Yeah, that's what I like doing. I like playing a lot of variety of different games. So that's what you get when you come here to Pablo Man 44's Twitch stream. So all the people out there who I see on the Facebook groups and stuff that I'm in that are tired of people streaming call of duty and all those games like that they want to watch somebody play something else you know they want to watch a uh, twist stream who does something else come to my stream man you won't see those games on my stream all right what you will see what you might see is some genjin impact you might see some spider-man miles morales you might see some kenny bridge of spirits because i want to get into that game you might see me play hitman you might see me here you will see me here on mondays doing this podcast because that's what i do on mondays you might see me playing a random um, horror game. I got, I'm got. i going to tell you the list I got that I might play Friday um, if I don't find a, another movie to go see. I don't think there's anything for me to go see. I have their demos. Like, they're, you know, they're not the full games of these games, but there's Deathly Stills, Fierce to Fathom, 
um, Home Alone, Stay Out, and Them and Us. Those are all demos that I want to try out. They're all horror games, so I want to watch that. Um, and then I have Thief Simulator 2. I got... I'm able to play the play test. I haven't. I need to hurry up and play it before time runs out on me. I don't know if there's if it's timed or anything, but I need to try it out. I, I'm I may try it out after stream tonight, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, I do stuff like that here on my Twitch stream. So if you got friends and family and people's, you know, you you swing, you are cruising through Facebook groups and stuff like that, or or Reddit or whatever, and you see people were saying. You know, Tyler, you know, I, I want to watch something new. I, I want to watch a new streamer. I want to support some small streamers. Send them my way. If they're tired of watching Fortnite and Call of Duty and games like that, you know, send them my way, man. Like, we have fun here and we do other stuff. So, but I'm about to get out of here. Blue Box Game Studios is still disappointing. Um, they don't have anything new going on. Nothing on their app. Nothing in their Twitter. <clears throat> They're still not, you know, fulfilling the promises. And, you know, it is what it is. I'm just waiting for a Silent Hill game to come out, man. I need I need some new Silent Hill in my life, so. But I have these other obscure um, indie horror games to, you know, hold me down until. <laughs> so, Deathly Stillness. Oh, Tormented Souls, Fears to Fathom. Them and us stay out. And then I have other games I need to play. Electrician Simulator. I love simulator games. Those are the kind of games I like playing on my, my PC. Simulator games. I have American Truck Simulator, Euro Truck Simulator. I have um, Thief Simulator. And I got to try the Thief Simulator too. I have, um, what is it, House Swapper? house flipper whatever whatever it's called house flipper i think it's house flipper i don't see it up here there's no thumbnail for it but you know that's why i like to play on my pc um because like i said there's no big triple a pc only titles and that's why they're clamoring for the playstation um exclusives to be ported to the pc you know because you know you want our games you want it bad i know it that's what she said all right but i'm out of here thank you for stopping by and chatting thank you southern justice for coming by and helping me to tease and not spoil the movie at the same time um please watch the shows go back and watch the shows i'm telling you you're missing out and you're gonna be like oh man i should have watched these when you watch them at least you know you're gonna watch eternals you said you're gonna watch eternals so next time i stream um we'll talk about it um you said you watch von you said you watch it before my next podcast so you, you're saying in a week? In a week you watch it? All right. So maybe I'll hold off until next week. Next week, we'll be back here next week. And I want to see you. I want you to tell me what you thought about the movies, The Eternals, and um, Spider-Man. So please, you guys, watch, watch the movies. That's your homework. Until next week, I'll see you guys here. Same Batman channel, same Batman stream at the same Batman time. I'm Pablo Man 44 This has been another Play Level Podcast. Yes, watch Hawkeye. Um, and I'll catch you guys next week. Make sure you be kind, loving, and caring to somebody out there, man. And people going through some stuff with the pandemic and all kinds of things, other normal things, crazy things that happen in real life. You know, people out there trying to find jobs, trying to find happiness, trying to find peace, just trying to find some relaxation. Stop stressing people out. Don't stress yourself out. Don't over worry about things. You know, things that happen, they happen. You know, you gotta, you know, you gotta try to find the good, the purpose, and all that in it. So just try to think positive. Let's be more positive. Be more loving and caring and kind to other people and to ourselves. All right. I'm Pablo Man 44. Peace and love, y'all. I'm out of here.